welcome back to another video. Today, what are we doing? We are working with cat eye gels to create a fabulous hand painted um, spring. Yeah, spring flowers. That's what we're going to do. So the first thing I am doing is taking a ombre set of nails that I did in like a pinky, I forget what it's called, bubbles maybe? It's a Madame Glam color. And I am using the chrome powder to rub in some pinky chrome on top of the nails. You can see them there. I've done two. I'm going to finish the rest. And when I am done, I am going to apply some matte. I believe it was matte. Yeah. I had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> I applied some, oh, I'm sorry. I leave, I leave two, I leave two nails. I leave two nails that are not chromed. I don't even know what I did there. See, see, I got all confused. I'm going to actually put some glitter on these other nails and I'm going to kind of scoop it off of my table here. Cause I decided to, um, you know, decorate the table with glitter. Cause why wouldn't you do that when you're trying to open up a, a container of glitter? I don't know, you know, so I'm using some bluish iridescent -y coloring here. They're uh, hexagonal glitters. And I'm layering those on top of the tacky layer from the polish. So I haven't added anything really to them. I'm just adding these to the inhibition layer. Then I'm going to matte top coat these and cure them all for a couple of minutes. It actually worked out with this because I could kind of scoop the things I wanted to scoop and leave the other bigger pieces on the table. So you just have to make sure your table's clear of uh, debris if you're going to spill glitter on it and then use it to put it on your nails. <laughs> wow. Okay. So yeah, so I'm going to finish that up in just a second and I will switch screens so that we can move along and clean up a little bit of my table because yeah, I decided to get really messy there as you can see. And off we go. So the first thing I did here was I shook up some of my cat eye paints and then I laid them out on the table here or table. It's not a table. Well, I mean, it is on my table, but it's on my uh, palette there, which is just a tile. Um, if you haven't uh, found something for yourself to put uh, gel paints and other things on a piece of bathroom tile or kitchen tile or any of that works lovely. Um, and they're really cheap to buy. So what I did, um, so these are 9D cat eyes, just to clarify what it is I'm using. You could use any cat eye gel. I don't think it really matters. But what I essentially wanted to see was, could you take that uh, look that's going around, that heart look, and do something different with it? And so I decided I wanted to try painting in cat eye to see if you could actually get it to come out. Um, with that cool effect that cat eye has. And I have to say, I was quite impressed with how this came out and I will end up probably doing some more as the spring goes on, uh, because it made such a neat effect. So you can see me with my magnet right now, just kind of playing with the, the leaves there that I've made to see if I could get, you know, like how I wanted those to look. So if you disperse it, obviously it's darker and has more of that background color. If you, you know, fuzz it up or some people call velveting it up, um, where you kind of just, uh, shake around that, that magnetic, uh, the magnetic particles and it almost looks kind of velvety. The one thing with this look is that you have to think ahead about what you want to have this come out as. And I say that because, if you are doing multiple layers, like I just did leaves, or if you're doing vining or any of that kind of thing, I'll show you one like that as well. Then you have to freeze that first because the cat eye will disperse if you just kind of leave it sitting there. So if you do a client, you're going to do a lot of in and out of the light. Um, the good thing is, is that you can just flash freeze them and that will hold the magnetism, the magnetizing in place. So with this one, so it depends on what you're doing. Like in, in the flower case with the leaves, I wanted to magnetize the leaves first because I want the flowers to not necessarily have the same look or the same cat eye effect as I wanted the leaves to have. Um, but with this one, I did hearts and vines and this one I'm going to, 
um, magnetize. And then I don't think I freeze this one. I think I go, oh no, I do. I think I do. Um, and then I went in and put the, the vining in after. So I got that to look how I want first. So brought it up, judged it. And then like that, judged, <laughs> I judged it. And then I'm going to put it in the light. I'm going to take the flower back out and now I'm going to put the petals on. So I'm going to use some different, two different colors. You can see I'm just dipping right into my cat eye and we're going to layer these a little bit at a time. All right. So from this point forward, I am going to just pick up the pace of the video a little bit because nobody wants to watch me do that um, in slow motion, essentially. <laughs> So I'm speeding this up just a little bit so that you guys can uh, move along your day. Uh, right. So I've got the two different colors. I am going in and drawing some leaves, uh, not leaves, sorry, uh, petals. This one's going to be kind of a centered flower. So I'm, you know, going to draw the, the, the petals in. So I drew the leaves so that it, the, it was centered on the nail. I can't talk. And now I'm putting in some of the petals and then I will go back and do a second layer of petals after. But like I said, because we're working with cat eye and I want the cat eye to take on a certain effect, I am freezing it in between each step. These are though in incredibly easy to do in the sense of once you have a plan in place, like I was kind of playing with this as I was recording because I've never done it before. And I was like, I wonder if you could do it and what it'll look like. Um, so I was playing as I went, but once you have a plan in place, uh, as I got further along in doing these, it was faster and faster for me to do them. So you will find that this is a quick and easy technique for somebody who wants a little bit of nail art, wants something a little spunky maybe, but isn't, uh, looking for necessarily three dimensional. So they get sort of a three dimensional look because of the cat eye without actually having three dimensional art on their nails. So what I'm doing right now is just putting a little bit of a, like a streamer or a vine and then putting some dots on either side. And we're going to just fluff these up. The hearts will not change because I've already cured those, but I'm going to bring the cat eye to the surface for the rest of this. And I know it's a little hard to see on the video, but you, it does make a really cool cat eye effect. Uh, I am using, so I'm using my, I'm playing with the different magnets as I go to see what kind of different effects I can kind of get out of it. Um, and then I went back and I'm using a magnet on the top and the bottom and then side to side, whoops, <laughs> but not like that <laughs> side to side like this. And what that does is it just changes the way that the cat eye, um, acts on the actual nail. So I'm just bringing that cat eye back up to the surface. So if you kind of mess it up, don't worry about it. You can use your magnet to, to re disperse it however you want. So I know a lot of people get a little freaked out about the cat eyes in the sense of like, what if I screw it up? You know, if you screw it up, it's not a big deal because you can just take the, the magnet and, you know, re fluff it. That's what I'm going to call it. Fluffing it. So I'm adding a second color into the center of our flower. This is the pinky one. Before that, I had this, I had like that dark purpley kind of color and the leaves obviously are green. This makes for a really neat, it kind of reminds me of, and I'm going to date myself, but if you are one who grew up in the eighties, we used to have these, um, stickers. They were called oil stickers <laughs> and they had this really cool, you know, like monochromatic or monochrome, not monochromatic, monochrome, um, shift in them and you could squish them and they would change different colors and make different patterns. Anyway, that's kind of what this reminds me of. So there you go. That one, you can see a little bit more of the cat eye a little better. So that's three nails done. I threw some hearts in there just because it is still February. Um, I know this is going to come out after Valentine's Day, but I just thought it would be neat to see. This one, I went with kind of a sweater 
nail effect. It wasn't really intentional. I was just making designs. I was like, oh, let's see what happens if we do this. And uh, sorry if you can hear my kids behind me. <laughs> it's a snow day. So as I was doing this, I decided that I kind of liked it and I wanted to add some more to the nail and ultimately really ended up kind of almost looking like a sweater nail. Um, but with different colors. So I used a dark purpley blue on this one and then a pink for the dots. And I really like the way this one came out. I actually want to do some more of these because it was just a lot of fun and it was different. It was just something very different than, you know, what we've seen out there on YouTube lately. Um, especially with the cat eye effect in between. So we're going to do this and then we're going to add some more on the corners. And that's why I say it's kind of like a sweater nail because that's kind of the same effect that a sweater nail has when you do the sweater nail design. So it's just kind of almost like linking in between. So this one is super easy. It took me maybe two or three minutes to finish the whole nail. And then you just have to fluff it up with the magnet to get that cat eye look. And there you go. You can kind of see it a little bit on this one. You can see the, the cat eye sort of coming up and shifting around as I go around the nail, which is fun. At the end, I will extend the picture for just a minute or two so you can really kind of see the effect. The hard thing with the cat eye and photography is that it doesn't move. Photography doesn't move. So you're not getting that shift um, like you do with... Uh, a moving video. So I will try to get a close up to at the end of the video where I rotate it back and forth a little bit to kind of show you that cat eye in a little more detail. But these are really neat. They're really fun. I envision other fun things coming. Maybe like St. Patty's Day. I'm just saying. Cat eye and St. Patty's Day could be a lot of fun. This one is the green so this is a really intense, it's actually one of my favorite green cat eyes I've ever owned. Um, I find, it's interesting, blue cat eye and sometimes green cat eye and red cat eye. Those are the three that can be really hard to find good cat eyes in. You know, there's like, there's variations of them, but they're typically more gold or more yellow or something. They're not necessarily that pretty intense like emeraldy. This one is a really pretty intense sort of emeraldy lime green, if that makes sense. So we're going to freeze the, the vine, then we're going to come back and put some little flowers on it. So I have one, two, three out of the four done for this set. So we're just going to finish that last one and then Oh, no, I lied. There's five. Ha, ha, ha. I thought there were four. <laughs> oh, that's right. I did the the roses. Okay. I was like, what else did I do? I forgot now. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do these fun roses. So these are the roses everybody sees everywhere, right? We see them everywhere. I feel like all the time. But Natalie Mudridge had done um, a nail like this that she had copied from someone and I saw it and I was like, ah, it's actually really pretty because it kind of builds on that whole sweater idea again. Um, but of course I wanted to do sort of my own version of it. So I decided that it might look really cool in cat eye and guess what? It really does. <laughs> so while that other one is curing, I am going to work on this one. And in order to do these, so it was actually Natalie that sort of demystified this for me. So thank you um, to Natalie for demystifying this to me. Uh, I always have tried these and never gotten them quite right. And I couldn't figure out what the heck I was doing wrong. And she had pointed out on one of her two tutorials that when she does these, she gets a little thicker in the center and then drags the corners of the polish out so that it thins that corner and that's what makes it or gives it that little more of a rose petal look and that was the thing I'd been missing so how do people get these like perfect little roses and I can't even you know I can draw flowers all day long but I can't actually do this so thank you for that and so if you struggle with this like I struggled with this there's a little hint or trick for you so lay that middle line with an idea of where you're going and then just draw out the little corners. 
and that'll give you your rows. In order to finish or fill in these, this particular nail, I did just go in and put some little triangles or half triangles into the corners of the nails. So that's cool. You can do that or you can just leave them or you can put dots or, I mean, there's a million ways you could finish this, but that's just what I did. And I really liked the way this one came out. So if you want sort of a, I call this a wallpaper look cause you know, it fills the whole nail. So if you want kind of a wallpaper look, this is a great way to get a wallpaper look on your nail. And then we're going to take the, um, oh, and I'm going to add some dots. I'm going to take the magnet in just a second and we're going to fill in that or not fill in. We're going to take the magnet and, and fluff up. You can see it. See it changing? Yes. You can see it now. So we're changing up the, oh, and I did use two different colors too, by the way, there are pink roses and there are purple roses on this nail. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Sorry. <laughs> So you can do these any colors you want, but there you go. I wanted them to have a little shift between colors. So it wasn't just all one color. I thought it'd just be more interesting. Okay. So now we've got four out of five done for the last nail. We're just going to be doing a quick, uh, a quick thing. And on the center, the very center of that flower, we're also going to add a rhinestone just to glitz it up a little bit. You don't have to, this is just something I did. You could do this like a thousand different ways, but. I like a little rhinestone here and there. I think it's fun. There you go. And I did use just a uh, top coat underneath that. It's nothing, nothing fancy. I know some people use gem glue and all of that. I do sometimes, but not if I'm just looking for it to last for a couple days or if it's a display nail. So, all right, we're going to add some little berries to our vine on this one. And then we're going to cat eye those and freeze them so that they stay and they come out really pretty. They really added, I could see this like as a Christmas design for next year on a different color scheme. Um, this one obviously is more spring, but yeah, you could do, you do some cool stuff. I'm, I'm imagining if I could find a nice red, I could do some holly berries with, uh, cat eye. And that is almost the end of our video. So if you have not tried this yet, I highly recommend it. It was a lot of fun and you could probably come up with a million other design ideas that I haven't even thought of. Um, if you do want to see me do something in Cat Eye, feel free to comment and let me know what you'd like to see. And I will try to uh, do whatever it is you're looking for and we'll see if it comes out. So again, there you go. Yeah. So you can see that really brighten up when I pull the Cat Eye up or the magnetic pigment in there up. And we're going to freeze that one and then we're going to top coat them all. I do go in and top coat them shiny, but you don't have to. You could just leave these right as they are. Um, it's not necessarily necessary to put top coat on top of this. Um, you don't want to matte top coat. So I did try that too on a, a nail that I had as an experiment. I tried matte top coating nail uh, cat eye. I didn't really love the way it came out. It wasn't amazing. So just consider that. Maybe there's another way to do it. I'm going to keep playing with it because maybe there's a way to make it look cool, but it kind of just looked milky and flat. It didn't really, didn't really lend anything to the nail. So I am going to top coat these with clear coat and that is our set for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.